What's up everyone? Welcome back to another late night, another sci-fi picture. We've been having a lot of fun with the pictures so far, Forbidden Planet, and the next one we're going to be watching, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the original one from the 50s, 1956. Um, we're going to put Manchurian Candidate on a pause because, um, I mean, the sci-fi pictures are, they're, they're so good and there's so many to watch. But the Manchurian Candidate will come soon. And yeah, excited to get into this picture. Excited that everybody recommended it in uh, the Forbidden Planet comment section. And well, for this film... I'm not so sure what to expect besides, obviously, um, some shape shifters just by the name, I gather. But yeah, excited to get into this picture. And without any further delay, Captain, we are a go. <laughs> well, that's one thing that's different. Um, Forbidden Planet ha filmed it in CinemaScope. This is Super Scope. I'm not entirely sure of the difference, um, but I can count on you guys to inform me. I'm a doctor too. I am not insane. Right, I am right, not insane. Right, now, I... now suppose we just sit down over here, Dr. Bennell. Well, he's a doctor, so his, his reputation must precede him at this point. How could they take him for a mental patient? Something evil had taken possession of the town. These two. What a great contrast. You see, you see this doctor coming in into this small town, his narration, something evil takes over the small town. And, it, you know, it's brilliant starting out that way, you know, with a medical hospital. Are you still interested? My interest in married women is strictly professional or yours would have been a lost cause long ago. <laughs> oh, quick witted doctor as well. And I assume Becky, whoever Becky is, is a love interest. And Bill Bittner's taking his secretary to lunch. And speaking of lunch, will you tell whoever that is that I'm out having mine? Hmm. Such a small town, you know, the doc knows everyone. And nobody's here for their appointment when he's here. So something fishy is going on. Is he Uncle Ira or isn't he Uncle Ira? Of course he is. I told Wilma that, but it was no use. It's almost like he, he's finding it slightly hysterical you know, whatever is going on. <laughs> and there is a slight bit of um, disbelief, if you will. Because he, he's just fresh back. My nurse tells me you were in last week and wanted very much to see me. It wasn't anything important. Now, isn't that odd? Isn't that something is odd? It, yeah, I don't know what to say. I'm just a general practitioner. Love is handled by the specialists. Well. <laughs> yeah, hopeless romantic. And very good line so far. I'm a general practitioner. Love is for the specialists. Don't let her get me. Nobody's gonna get you, Jimmy. <laughs> that should certainly raise an alarm of sorts because now it's becoming a pattern. Shut your eyes. In the words of the poet, I'll give you something to make you wise. That's a good <laughs> He's so good with words. He's your Uncle Ira, all right? He is not. There must be a telltale sign to tell the difference between somebody who has converted or been snatched. The words, gesture, the tone of voice, everything else is the same, but not the feeling. Hmm. Well, it's, uh, it's incredible that whatever these snatchers are doing, it can inherit all the memories, but there's no emotion. Even these days, it isn't as easy to go crazy as you might think. But you don't have to be losing your mind to need psychiatric help. This conversation almost echoes the very beginning of the film where he is almost considered or can ask the question, am I going crazy? Because... He pretty much looks it at the beginning of the film. Obviously, the boy's mother was his mother. I'd seen her. And Uncle Ira was Uncle Ira. There was no doubt of that after I talked to him. Well, Uncle Ira is smiling, so... I mean, it, to her point, it's all the pretense of... It could be emotion, it could not. And I know a bank where the, the wild, wild time, time grows. grows. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. Hey. 
<laughs> that's a that's an interesting line within the context of the film. You have not changed a bit. Um, how would you know if somebody has changed but by testing their emotions? It's evidently contagious. An epidemic mass hysteria. In two weeks it spread all over town. Hmm, contagious, an epidemic. <laughs> Hopefully nobody catches it or it spreads. What happened to the crowd tonight? I don't know. It's been this way for two or three weeks now. Well, two or three weeks. So timeline sort of works out the same with the fruit stall. Everything is, it's empty. Better hold those drinks. Emergency. Well, at least they called before we ordered dinner. <laughs> there goes this business and two dry, very dry martinis. Well, if you're not sick, who is? Nobody. Well, then why did you drag me away from my dinner? Well, you won't believe it, Miles, until you see it. You won't believe it until you see it yourself. I mean... It's each line is leading up to this thrilling reveal. Body. Murder. <laughs> Wait, this could either be murder, it could be. So, well, I don't know. Self defense? Who is this? Is this the alien? There's all the features, but no details, no character, no lines. It's no dead man. That, that's, the, that, that's a John Doe description. This sounds crazy, but if I should do an autopsy. I think I'd find every organ in perfect condition. Oh, wouldn't it be interesting if he had no fingerprints? He's a blank. Waiting for the final finished face to be stamped onto it. But whose face? <laughs> They're so calm with a, with a body with no ID just laying on top of the pool table. Jack's 5'10 and weighs 140 pounds. <laughs> oh. Teddy, will you stop talking nonsense? Ah, okay, so by her... By her assumption it's going to replicate him or it is replicating him nothing happens by morning call the police if something happens call me will you <laughs> yeah he's curious burning with curiosity well it's not personally attacking him so i mean he still has a level-headed mind but to whoever it is affecting they're considered within the bracket of mass hysteria. The first time I was really scared. Dan Kaufman's explanation of what was wrong in town. Mass hysteria. It almost makes you wonder, from the very beginning of the film, who was who? Everybody who he came in contact with, the, um, his, his co-worker, the police officer who he um, addressed, were they already snatched, or were they still human? Well, it's about time you two got home. Dad, what are you doing in the basement this time of night? Working in my shop. Yeah, in, in very interesting fashion as well, and it does not need any sort of props or whatever. It, this, this works so well just on its own that the father's shadow, you're again thinking, is that the father or a replica of the father? A double. No! No! It's you! It's you! Well, di isn't that effective? He, the body got the same cut. It's you. It's you. Miles, what about Becky? Do you think she's all right? Oh, <laughs> that, 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 see? See? When, it's, when it personally affects him, he, he goes. He's thinking, wait. Is the father the father? Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Who is that? Is that Becky? That's Becky's body double. Yeah, but how are these bodies just showing up at such specific houses? I want to see one of these bodies. All right. Now you're going to bed and you're staying with her. Put on your clothes. We'll go to Jack's first. Okay, so by process of elimination, we'll assume since it was Becky's body, the father is already converted. I heard lots of things Teddy said, and none of them made any sense. All right, now hold on to it, pal. I was here too. The question is going to come up. Why didn't you report this? The body that we saw here bore an uncomfortable resemblance to Jack. All right, let's go on to Becky's and have a look. Oh, now, yeah, now how <laughs> this, will, this will further his own um, argument about the doctor um, hallucinating if the body is not found. Your mind started playing tricks and reality became unreality. 
The dead man became Jack's double in your eyes. Reality became unreality. Boy, that's a that's a dangerous state of mind. Fingerprints burnt off with acid. Just seen it on the slab in the morgue. Hmm. Turned up in a burning haystack. Uh, well, how how did that happen? I I guess because it could not get a hold of Jack, so it's a lost cause. Who is it? The gas man. Morning, Doc. Good morning, Charlie. Exactly. I guess I'm a little jittery. Ex yeah, yeah, everybody's now jittery. Everything could be suspenseful because you have no idea who you're coming in contact with. She was worried about you. All right. She's in my house. At your house? Why? Well, it's a long story, but she'll tell you all about it. <laughs> now everything with her is fine. It's strange. Suddenly they deny, they deny any help. Becky's still at his house. Oh, that that was the father. They're both, they're both converted. And I guess, I'm guessing, because the, the, the subject was about Becky, they were targeting Becky. You're looking ship shape. Thank you, sir. E even a social occasion amidst this atmosphere of hysteria is strange. Jack! It's almost like these humans are coming out of these plants or whatever shape these are. There isn't any danger until they're completely formed. Your blank didn't change right away. Not until you fell asleep. Your blank didn't fully form until you fell asleep. Okay, so the original body has to fall asleep before these duplicates, you know, gain everything. It's too late to call Danny, too. Well, what are you going to do? Get help. I hope whatever's taking place is confined to Santa Mira. At this point, the only people they can trust are the other two. All that body in your cellar needed was a mind. And it was... Hmm. It was taking mine while I was so asleep. So, it requires the main subject to be asleep. So, if they don't, if they do not sleep, shall we assume that it's not going to work? Or if they do sleep, um, does that just mean that the original body becomes obsolete? Or do they get rid of the original body? Who knows? Give me the state capital. I want to talk to the governor. The Sacramento circuits are busy, doctor. <laughs> this operator sounds like it's the it's been converted. Who can... You can't even trust the airwaves. Miles, I can't... Look, somebody's got to go or we don't get any help. Please, let's get out of here. Watch out for yourselves. So there were four pods. So Teddy, Jack, himself, and Becky. <laughs> well, he stabbed himself. That sounds... Just looks cathartic. Still busy. Tell her to keep trying. Also try San Francisco and Washington. Yeah, but who knows whether the steak even kills this thing. Listen, would you give me a couple of gallons fast? I'm in a hurry. Sure. Martha! Doc's in a this, hurry. Get the wind this here, film you? is fantastic. It's a runaway sci-fi paranoia film. There's been an accident. Funny, we haven't heard about it. Well, it just happened. See, even the gas station attendants look strange. Oh. Oh, boy. How did, how did the gas station... Well, okay, so the gas station, whatever these things are, they have the stock of these pods, I would guess. You place the pods in... Uh -huh. So you, you would place the pods in the vicinity of who you wanted to replicate and then you just hope they go to sleep. Maybe I'd better take it. Oh Why gosh. Don't you go in, Miles? We've been waiting for you. Oh, we've been waiting for you. Oh. So again, they're waiting for Sally to sleep and all these oh man, this is fantastic. Oh, they were all running after him like zombies. Designated as road this thing also station. controls the police. It is urgent. These two persons must be detained. Wow, you're almost gridlocked. It, it, I guess it's, you know, 
one pod goes to another, two become four, and it multiplies very quickly. So pretty much this whole small town will be part of, I would guess, a zombie town by the end of it. The film is progressively be get, uh, getting more and more claustrophobic for these two. You know, um, uh, the more... Sc- well, the more the film progresses, the less square footage becomes safe. If Jack doesn't get through. He's got to get through. Here, now take two of these. I'll help you to stay awake. Now, why would they need to stay awake if there's no pods next to them? We can't close our eyes all night. We may wake up changed to something uh, well, even in here. I would guess it, they just can't fall asleep in, in such a case if a pod comes or if somebody finds them. Only when we have to fight to stay human do we realize how precious it is to us. When it comes to when it comes to the the worst case scenarios, it really shows you are human, just by the way you react. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Something is so odd about this. How's it? Like suddenly everybody's congregating. Caw! Oh, this is just. This is fantastic. They're all zombies. Grimaldi, Pixley, mm. yes, So he was right. There was a plant. Malignant disease spreading through the whole country. That's all for today. Be ready again tomorrow. Ah, uh, well, again, the process of multiplication. Each one takes a pod. They go to someone who has not been converted, and they slowly, slowly, slowly convert everyone. The whole town's been taken over by the pods. Not quite. There's God. still you and Becky. It would have been so much easier if you'd gone to sleep. Oh, gosh. That was rather naive of him to do that, to open the door to Jack. Sooner or later, you'll have to go to sleep. I'll wait for you in the hall. It well, almost seems inevitable to the point where they can be diplomatic and don't have to exert any violence to these people. Tomorrow will I feel the same. No wow. No more. Wow. And you have no feelings. I guess that's a sacrifice for a problemless, simple life. Without mm. them, life's so simple, believe me. I don't want any part of it. You're forgetting something, Miles. What's that? You have no choice. You have no choice. <laughs> he has no choice because he has to sleep. He has, he has to sleep. It, that didn't even sound threatening coming from the doctor. You are, at this point, you are your worst enemy because naturally you need sleep. I might get one or even two, but I couldn't possibly get three of them. You're forgetting something, darling, me. Okay, there you go. It's teamwork. It's teamwork. She is, uh, she's as invested in getting out of this as he is. Go over by the desk. Now, how can they... How can they mask themselves from being not a double? Being original people with emotion. You would just not show emotion. But imagine how hard that would be. Whatever, whatever antidote they you just, they just injected them with works so quickly. Keep your eyes a little wide and blank. Show no interest or excitement. Show no interest or excitement. Yeah. <laughs> what a dull world to live in. If you were one of, if you were not one of them, but you were, you just. You just happened to escape. He said he'd phone the station, then I'd get the call. The line was busy. He's calling again now. Oh. <laughs> she just gave herself away. And he noticed it. Sam noticed it. This guy, they're probably going to sound the whole town. Imagine, imagine all the police running after them. Where would they even go? They have to... They have to go to, uh, you know, you would think from the beginning of the film, unless those people who had him in the um, the hospital, the emergency hospital, were not part of this thing, um, that they had to get out of this town or go to another state. Come on, they went this way. <laughs> it's not only the police, it's the entire town. It's the town running after you. Such a brilliant film. 
they, they, they don't even need to be zombies. It's just humans. I would guess the last time. Well, since Becky was literally um, lifted off her bed, that would be the last while well, interrupted sleep. So she had interrupted sleep. So these guys have not slept for a long time. They're exerting a lot of energy. Must not be easy at all. That is chancing it right there. Hiding underneath the planks when the entire town is coming after you? That's a chance. Such a beautiful, beautiful, awesome scene. Ah, how great is this? Like, you can imagine their heart is thumping just so that it just that they are not caught, that they can get away with this still um, able to love each other. Because they're, I mean, they want to love each other. They want to get married. They want to have a family. We better start. Or we'll never make it to the highway. Wait, somebody is singing. Somebody say. Well, I was thinking about this. So if if they're out of the vicinity of those two pods why can't they still go to sleep and it makes sense because um at at his place when they were cooking the steaks he stabbed himself at the gas station he burned the pod so at every instance any one of these pods that are placed that have the chance to replicate you know cell for cell atom for atom you have to burn it or kill it before it has a chance of fully reproducing and you don't go to sleep. So in this case, they can't go to sleep because the ones in the office, his office, they were not touched. They just left. So if they do go to sleep, those ones eventually become them. Oh, no, 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 no. No. Oh, hopefully she doesn't fall asleep. She's left all by herself. Weary and tired. I thought it was going to be a beacon, a siren of, you know, hope. He found a plant. It's radio and he found the plant where all the pods are. Ah, oh, what good directing. Becky. Oh, no. Here we go. What's, Becky, where what's are you? Becky's status? Growing thousands of pods in greenhouses. We've got to get away. I'm exhausted, man. I can't. Oh boy, how can he be sure? How can he be sure? How can he test her? Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> she didn't reciprocate back with love. There was no love in the kiss. She fell asleep. Stop acting like a fool, Miles, and accept us. Never. He's in here. Oh boy! See, there was there was no physical, you know, no alteration. This film is a, is very interesting. It, it's 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 interesting. My only hope was to get away from Santa Mara, to get to the highway, to warn the others of what was happening. Just a moment of sleep was the death of Becky. Wow. Come on, we gotta get away. Let him go. They'll never believe me. They'll never believe him. Okay. Sort of now it's now it's going towards the beginning of the film. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, the expansion. Not here already. You're next. You're next. You're That's Gremlins. That was Gremlins. Was it? Was it Gremlins? It w I, f I remember seeing that in in another film. Of course it's a nightmare. Plants from another world taking over human beings. Mad as a March hare. Well, they certainly didn't take his profession, the fact that he's a doctor into account, that maybe he is telling some truth. They look like uh, great big seed pods. Where was the truck coming from? Santa Mara. Oh, he's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. Operator, get me the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Yes, it's an emergency. And this time they will be able to get a hold of the FBI. <laughs> the end. Okay. Wow. What a suspenseful, 
paranoia-filled film. The ending sort of... It's an interesting ending. Interesting to end on sort of the relief of... Okay. The, 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 now, now certain help is coming. But then is it too late? Because... You know, these aliens are very adaptive. You know, what if they can sort of camouflage these pretense emotions? Um, uh, up to what point has the pause, the expansion of these pods, um, how far have they been taken? Um, so really interesting film. And can he at this point, at this very point, can he sleep? We don't know. We don't know. Um, but so far, it's a, it affected the town. Um, the percentage of how much it affected the town, we don't know. But again, such a brilliant picture. There, There is no need for any special effects, any props or any um, sort of um, like gore or whatever. Um, you know, very sim um, like the thing. Um, I haven't seen the original thing, but just talking about the thing, John Carpenter's The Thing, obviously very similar to this film. Um, the aliens happen to be extremely violent and they, they, the, the, there's so much prosthetics in the film and so on and so forth. This film takes, takes it to a very, very brilliant level to fact in the fact that like you are the you are the enemy you are you it's you you end up becoming certain destruction to yourself and then to other people um just by yielding to sleep if you will um and you you clearly don't know uh well i mean just think about think about it um like at some points, uh, do, do, you, do you have family members? Do you have friends that don't necessarily show emotion? Um, if you just so happen to meet someone and they don't show emotion, could they be the thing? Could they not be the thing? Uh, and and they, they could have planted a pod. And the next thing you, you do, you wake up and you're it. You are it. You're part of them. You're one of them. Um, the, the picture works, the plot really, really, uh, you know, drives this film, nothing else but the plot, the really good acting, the fact that this is a small town, very contained town that becomes smaller and smaller and more claustrophobic as the, the film keeps going on. The music, um, you know, just added the, had, was, had the right presence. It wasn't overbearing, but at the same point, uh, and time. It was just enough to to move things forward and you know this alien this alien thing you don't see besides the pod you don't really see it you never saw it attack anyone and, and it really it replicated even kids so this thing could really have it is an epidemic you know a disease that really infects very quickly um and as you would as you would assume it would be very hard to sort of test other people because you would have to elicit a certain emotion out of people uh, out of someone um the dog just so happened to be um you know a coincidence if you will that uh, becky just yelped um, from her human nature, from her, you know, um, s empathy uh, or sympathy um, for a living creature. And think about if the entire world or the small town or wherever you are was completely void of that. Um, and then what the ultimate purpose of this alien life form is. It's fascinating. And to think that there is a remake, you know, this film has the, the potential to go another hour, really. Uh, but it's so tight. It's so s quick. It's so full. I don't know how else to describe it. It, it gets to the point so quickly. And that's it. 
it's a great picture great picture i'm going on and on but if i missed anything if i got anything wrong i can count on you guys to correct me um i did speak quite a bit so do forgive me if i'm yapping um but yeah really interesting recommendations i really thank you um and yeah until the next picture until the next fascinating picture i think a lot of the comments uh, were talking about them or the thing or one of um one of those pictures but I'm excited to get really excited to get to the Manchurian candidate. Uh, I've never seen Frank Sinatra in a picture uh, and I know he's in it. So really excited to get into that one and a lot more films within the 50s, 60s, um, 40s, 30s. They're great decades uh, and great filmmaking. Yeah, but until then, um, always remain vigilant um, and just look out, look out and stay hard you know like david goggins says stay hard and <laughs> just keep going uh take care guys what's up you cinephiles thank you very much for making it to the very end me and big willie don't take that for granted we really appreciate you now if you'd like to show your support to us you know what you can do up here you can smash that button really just smash it and you know if you would like to check out some more content they're all curated by days up over here and playlists so you know what we hope you're having a great day don't crumble and just continue to smile and be a good bastion of cinema.